Manny Man Does History. The French Revolution saw France executing its king, becoming a republic, and going to war with most of Europe. During the wars, a young general rose to power, returned to France, and declared himself the supreme leader. His name was Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon defeated the Second Coalition of Nations fighting against France. The Treaty of Amiens, signed between France and Britain, brought about a peace that would last for just over a year. During the war, France had reformed and annexed many countries, creating regimes friendly to France. The Dutch Republic was turned into a puppet state, the Batavian Republic, various Italian republics were set up, and Switzerland was reformed into the Helvetic Republic. As part of the Treaty of Amiens, Britain was to leave Malta, Egypt and the Cape Colony, Napoleon trying to clamp down on British imperialism. They hesitated as Napoleon seemed to not be fulfilling his ends of the bargain. In 1802, the Swiss people rose up against the new government and Napoleon's troops occupied Switzerland. Other countries looked on as Napoleon interfered with foreign affairs. Britain had sent orders to leave Cape Colony, but when they saw the French occupy Switzerland, they sent the troops back and guard against the French. Napoleon told Britain to stay out of European affairs as he reorganised things and told British government to stop its media portraying him poorly. He moved forces across the Atlantic to Haiti and French Louisiana, which he had won back from Spain in 1800. Britain gave France an ultimatum to leave Switzerland and Holland. He quickly sold Louisiana on the cheap to the United States of America before it could be captured by Britain. Napoleon wasn't ready for war and tried to make several deals with Britain, but none that suited Britain. So they declared war on France in May 1803, beginning what would become the Napoleonic Wars. Britain blockaded France, but sat in constant threat of French invasion. In 1804, the French Senate declared Napoleon Emperor, creating a title he could pass on and ensure France didn't fall back under a king or under the Jacobins, and thus began the French Empire. In 1805, Britain and Russia joined together to oust France from Netherlands and Switzerland. Austria joined them after Napoleon was declared King of Italy. Sweden joined in too and formed the Third Coalition. Spain was an ally of France and they combined fleets but were defeated at the Battle of Trafalgar by Lord Nelson who was shot and killed during the battle. Meanwhile, Napoleon's Grand Armée moved across the Holy Roman Empire and defeated the Austrian army in Ulm in Bavaria. He then occupied Vienna as a joint Russian-Austrian army approached. Against the odds, he defeated them at Austerlitz, killing 25,000 soldiers while only losing 7,000. The Holy Roman Empire was dissolved and Napoleon reorganised them into various duchies and kingdoms to make them easier to govern. Austria signed a treaty with France, gave up some land and exited the war, leaving the rest in a stalemate. These wars saw such a grander scale to warfare as France began to amass a huge army through conscripts and volunteers of hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Part of Napoleon's strategic prowess was having artillery units themselves with infantry and cavalry rather than just artillery supporting from the back. His vast armies were able to live off the land and thus not be necessarily reliant on supply lines, allowing them to move much faster. Napoleon believed in high morale for his armies and rewarded those loyal to him. Very often outnumbered French forces came out victorious under Napoleon. The Industrial Revolution saw the mass production of weapons, allowing France to arm its huge armies and Britain produce for the coalition armies. Prussia, Russia, Britain, Saxony, Sicily and Sweden joined to form the Fourth Coalition. Napoleon swiftly pushed against the Prussians, captured Berlin and headed right along towards the Russian frontier, picking up more soldiers along the way from conquered states. He ultimately defeated Russia at the Battle of Friedland and established new puppet states across Germany and Poland. 
Napoleon set up the Continental System, which excluded Britain from trade, but smugglers led this to be ineffective. In 1807, Britain attacked neutral Denmark-Norway to capture their ships, fearing they would fall into France's hands. So Denmark-Norway joined the war on the side of France. This attack also turned Russia against Britain, declaring the Anglo-Russian War, in which Britain would support Sweden against Russia, fighting over the continental system. I know, right? By the end of the War of the Fourth Coalition, Napoleon controlled or influenced most of Western and Central Europe. Because Portugal continued trading with Britain, France and Spain invaded, and then in 1808, France turned on Spain and took control of the Iberian Peninsula directly. This also caused the Spanish colonies in America to fight for their independence. The fighting in Spain would prove troublesome, as the Spanish would fight for years using guerrilla tactics against the French. Britain came in through Portugal to help. In 1809, Britain and Austria formed the Fifth Coalition against France. Britain tried to take Antwerp and open a new front for Napoleon to fight, but it failed. Britain continued ruling the waves as it fought France and its allies on the seas. Napoleon travelled to personally retake Madrid, but had to leave to defeat the Austrians. Without him, the French army was defeated by the Spanish, Portuguese and British led by Sir Arthur Wellesley, who would later become the Duke of Wellington. Napoleon rushed into Austria to cross the Danube, and suffered his first major tactical defeat at the Battle of Asburn essling But the Austrians couldn't follow it up, and Napoleon defeated them at Wagram. Napoleon negotiated harsh terms with Austria in Vienna, ceding loads of land to other nations. While in Vienna, Napoleon narrowly escaped an assassination attempt by a German nationalist. In 1810, Napoleon divorced his wife Josephine and married an Austrian archduchess to secure relations with Austria and hopefully produce an heir. He had already made many of his relatives kings and rulers of his conquered lands. France continued to grow, having annexed the Papal States, Holland and some German states. Because Britain was interfering with American trade and forcing American sailors into their navy, the United States of America declared war on Britain. The War of 1812 went on until 1815 and ultimately amounted to no territory changes, but not before the British captured and burnt Washington, D.C. Napoleon and Russia both wanted a semi-independent Poland they could control. Russia was also failing to comply with the continental system, so Napoleon amassed a massive international army and invaded in 1812. As they pushed in, the Russians retreated, destroying what resources they could so as not to fuel the French army. Napoleon fought the deadliest battle of the Napoleonic Wars, the Battle of Borodino, just outside of Moscow. He captured the ground, but failed to destroy the Russian army. He entered an already burning Moscow, hoping for a Russian surrender that would never come, but ultimately saw no victory in sight and decided to retreat. The road back was disastrous for the French army, as they were undersupplied as the Russian winter was setting in, along with Russian guerrilla attacks. Only 27,000 fit soldiers returned. 380,000 were either dead or missing, while 100,000 were captured. Napoleon returned to Paris to prepare for the advancing Russians. Napoleon quickly replenished his army numbers. Prussia declared war on France and the Sixth Coalition grew. The British, Portuguese and Spanish had forced the French out of Spain in 1813. Austria was convinced to join the coalition too, adding more and more to the coalition's forces. Napoleon initially led a great victory in Dresden, but the coalition forces moved in at Leipzig, and after the huge battle, Napoleon was forced to retreat. He was offered to remain as emperor, but only within France's natural boundaries, losing most of the empires he'd conquered. He rejected it and they closed in on Paris. The coalition forces moved in and captured Paris in March 1814. After some fighting, Napoleon ultimately abdicated and was banished to the island of Elba.
the other countries came together to redraw the map of Europe. But this was not the end. In 1815, Napoleon escaped Elba and returned to France and regained support and ousted Louis XVII. He quickly amassed another French army and marched north to Belgium and catched the amassing 7th Coalition armies unawares. The surprise worked initially, but the Duke of Wellington took his forces to just outside the village of Waterloo, where his forces held their ground on a steep hill which delayed Napoleon's troops. The Prussians arrived and they all pushed against the French who retreated once more. Napoleon ultimately surrendered and abdicated once more. He was exiled this time to the much more remote island of St Helena in the middle of the Atlantic where he died in 1821. The House of Bourbon was reinstated, became king. At the end of it all, France was not the great power it once was, having spent so much on the wars. Britain came out as the greatest economic power in Europe. Napoleon's rule had brought certain elements of democracy and limits on monarchy that many countries held on to after his regimes were undone, not to mention the metric system. The wars instilled a great sense of nationalism, pride in one's country. The Congress of Vienna sought to arrange countries so that there was no imbalance of power, resulting in a stability that would last a century until the outbreak of World War I. During this century of stability, millions of people took the peacetime opportunity to cross the Atlantic and create a new life in the United States. Napoleon had a vision of a European association, one Europe united by common European values and ideals. 200 years on, Europe seems to have a bit of that. Still working out the kinks, though. Ba-bum!